first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio Get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is eight o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and in definite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and in definite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Hey, you back once again with First World Order Radio. Your host, Dr. Aline Bay. Bringing on my co-hosts. We're going to have bring on Brother R.L. Are you here, Grand Sheen? Peace and love, Brother Grand Sheen. Peace and love. How are you doing tonight, brother? Doing very well, very well. How's Dr. Aline doing? It's good. All right, I'm all right. I'm doing well, I, I'm All right, brother. Trying to hang on and get this information out to the people. All right. You know, that's what we do. That's, I'll that's what we specialize in. All right. All right. So begin right. Bring on Olabala. Brother Olabala, you here? Yeah, I'm here. Peace. Ah, peace. Peace, Brother Olabala. Doc, how you doing? Peace. Peace, Grand C. Peace, more. All right. Back again. All right. Let him pull it on him again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're on depth to try our best. <laughs> All right. Um, let's get into the topic. Tonight's topic of discussion is Washita and the indigenous people of the world. All right. Um, of course, when you talk about the word indigenous, um, you have to look up what it actually means. Um, and, I mean, and beyond the Webster, just, you know, the Webster Dictionary, we have to go beyond um, that interpretation um we can still use it but you know we need a more international meaning of the word indigenous we know that the word indigenous applies to being the most ancient or the oldest um genealogy or people on the planet you know um of course they come up with another word in which that means indigent in which that means poor you know what i'm saying um, or they have given the terminology means poor, you know, that is not what indigenous um, stems from. Right? That is their interpretation of it because they're playing word um, games or mm-hmm. technology. You know, we know that the word um, indeed, you know what I'm saying, means um, guy or black, you know, um, meaning people. You know, and then genes, 
genius means the genes. So it's talking about the genes of God or the genes of the black of the so called black people, which i.e. or the Moors. You know, mm-hmm. so indigenous means that it don't have nothing to do with the word indigent in which that they have translated. Um remember in language and linguistics and etymology and phonetics we have the um denotative words or meanings and we have connotative meanings. Mm-hmm. So you have to know which one you're dealing with when it comes to that type of um information. You know, so uh, when we're dealing with indigenous, you have to understand that we are talking about the genealogy um, of the original, of the most ancient people on the planet, all right, which is i.e., um, the said blacks, dark-skinned people, so-called colored people, uh, people of color, uh, the Moors, you know, uh, which is a more proper um, now, as compared to some of those other adjectives in which that we have utilized, in which that have now, um, like the word nigger, which that has now become being that before the 1960s, it was still written with a little G, I mean a little N. Mm-hmm. Then after the 1960s, you know, um, you know uh, as we progress past the 1950s and 60s, we've been asked for it to be capitalized. So they capitalized <laughs> that with the word Negro. To, to be um, a proper noun, you know, um, but yet these are simply labels, you know, but I will use these labels in order to get clarity and give you some understanding of when we're talking. Um, you just have to be smart enough, intelligent enough in order to know how to bring um, sciences together. So, you know, uh, we don't we don't play in that regard. You know, when it comes to this information, everybody who listen to us, you know, you know, y'all know what we be on. We be killing it. You know what I'm saying? You know, mm-hmm. you know it's, it's like, um, you know, it's like, um, you know, um, it, it, it's really, we really be, be getting at, you know what I'm saying, at this information. Y'all know, um, for those who have um, been listening to First World Order Radio um, or Dr. Lean Bay. You know what I'm saying for years or whatever the case is. You know we be going in and trying to get it, you know, get some clarity on some matters, so that we have to keep arguing about the same stupid shit over and over again. Which I mm-hmm. that's normally what I end up doing, anyway. You know, um, you know we we try not to have to end up doing that. We try to be as detailed and bring as much clarity as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Um, that's why, um, you know, we open up the phone lines. Anyone who have any questions, you know, please call. And matter of fact, the number is 626-414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. One more time, that's 626-414-3535. So what that means is, is that um, you need to see your call and name. That's real simple. All right? So, as you know... As we stated, the word indigenous actually means um, ND, means dark complected, you know what I'm saying? Or said black, reminiscence of black, you know? And the name gene or genius means your genealogy or your genetics. So it's talking about your black genes. So the indigenous word is definitely something which that we can utilize. Um, as a matter of fact, when you go to the Inter-American Definition um, or Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People that was drafted September 18, 1995, um, Section 1 says Indigenous Peoples, Article 1 Definition. This is what the definition is. In this declaration, Indigenous people are those who embody historical continuity with societies which existed prior to the conquest and the settlement of their territories by Europeans. So the European is not indigenous, right? because everywhere he have gone, he has attempted to con- you know to conquer and settle, you know, what I'm saying um, mm-hmm. as he did with an Africa, with bringing you know the Bible and the cross, and then we end up with the damn Bible and the cross, and then he and he end up with the damn land, <laughs> you know, you know, just like right, just like you've done throughout you know Australia, you go to that, go and ask the Aborigines what the fuck happened. Go and ask 
<laughs> Native Americans here as well as the Moors here and the different people, you know, from Peru or throughout South America on up into Alaska, you know, what happened, what we have come in contact with the individual. You know what I'm saying? So as so when we get that definition, they're not included in the definition of indigenous people. And I'm sorry, I didn't write the definition. You gotta get at the United Nations. This is the Inter American Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. And it goes on and it says alternatively one, as well as people brought involuntarily to the new world who freed themselves, he established a culture from which been torn. So that means even if you say that you just came from Africa four hundred years ago, then that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Live it up. You know what I'm saying? Right. But understand who mm-hmm. else is indigenous. Because you have the oldest genealogy on the planet coming from out of the interior of Africa, they have um, found that um, if you get the hidden history of the human race or what is known as forbidden archaeology by Michael Creemore, we're talking about 2.8 billion years ago in South Africa existed humanoid or people in which that was able to smelt metal. And from out of that, you know, um, we spread it throughout the interior or um, of Africa and then spread it throughout the diaspora throughout the other continents, as we know that uh, we know that the continents were still together. We had Pangea, or what was known as, um, quote-unquote, moon. All right? So, this means for those who say they're Africans, or for those who claim that they're not African, both of y'all are right, you know, in that regard. Right. But we're not recent Africans, majority of us, from just 400 years ago. Our genetic lineage here with the Americas stretches far back as 600 million years, based on archaeological digs and finds mm. and relics. You know, um, mm. once again, the book, Forbidden Archaeology, by Michael Creed, The Hidden History of the Human Race, there was a blast in which that took place in Dorchester, Massachusetts, in which that blasted out these particular bars or vessels. You know I'm saying look like bells, in which that had exquisite carving at the um, um, down near the bottom. So that means it was actually not exquisite carving per se. It was also writing system, apparently. And they said that um, in order to smoke this type of metal, we talking about you know 600 million years ago, you had to have had once again some high technology. So. There's never been a time on this planet that we have not had um, civilizations that was um, advanced, more advanced than the civilization which they're we're in currently. Okay? Right? There's never been a time for that to not have existed. Now, you get the Indigenous and Tribal Peoples Convention uh, adopted the 27th of June, 1989. From the United Nations um, It goes into Some of the exact same information About the indigenous um, As a matter of fact um, This is a definition From the United Nations In which that specifically states The word indigenous means those who have um, Embodied in historical continuity You know with the land Prior to the settlement Of their territories by the Europeans it says the exact same thing. So the so the United Nations is clear on who's the invader. And they are clear on who's the indigenous people. Because it also said that even those who came in from Africa 400 years ago, or as it states, you know, because I'm paraphrasing, this is exactly what it states, as well as the peoples brought involuntarily to the new world who freed themselves and reestablished the culture from which they have been torn. So they told you the signs of that um, for those who want to practice um, African culture, African belief system, African religion, you definitely can. Because that will help you to establish the culture from which that you've been torn. And this is all based on genetics. So you got to understand that genes of uh, intelligence, an uh, inner voice. All you know, right. Matter of fact, that's what intelligent means. Intelligent. And intel. The word tell. It's just like someone speaking or there's a voice. And then it's inside of your genes. So there's a voice inside of your genes in which that 
um, becomes activated or, you know, or awakens, you know, when it is time in order to speak clearly to you, you know, to transmit those currents and messages up into your brain to, um, or for your brain to transmit messages down into your cells, into your genealogy, your molecular sh- um, system. Um, so it, it it goes in that particular manner, you know. So um, we want to deal with those um, issues um, tonight. Um, I want to bring on my co-host um, for y'all can you know start the di- start the dialogue and you know then we can get into it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, I will listen to one sister. Uh, she was saying about the uh, the word indigenous. And uh, she says she has studied uh, uh, linguistics for years. And mm-hmm. she said that the indigenous would come up from the word indigent. You know. So I'm like, wow. You know, but I'm glad you cleared that up for me tonight. Uh, right. Because um, even the word indigent still talks about your genes. The word gent is just like intelligent. Indigent, okay. intelligent. Indeed, once again, means people. God or so called said blacks. Okay. Or complected. As in indigo. As in Indian. As in um Indus. No or Indos. Well, matter of fact, when Columbus came in, he referred to the people as the Indos people, which was not Indian people, but God's people. So mm-hmm. those are the words in which that it translates into. And then the word gent or genius, it refers to your genes. So they're trying to say that you have poor genes. If that's the case, um, poor would be the equivalent to the word weak genes. The only ones who have recessible weak genes are the Europeans who have to go around right. and conquer. And, you know, and, you know, they have the Napoleon complex because they're the least amount of people on the planet Earth. They have to appear to be more... Um, boastful and talkative and put on a damn front as if they're superior to everyone. But when you outnumber a motherfucker 18 to 1, you know what I'm saying, um, the ones who's 18 and to the 1 don't even, shouldn't even think about it. The 1 right. to the 18 which that um, has to do some serious thoughts. And this is the reason why for um, the processes which that they have developed, which is um, um, human genome Project in order to tamper with the genealogy, use genetically modified organisms to and disrupt, you know, to you know, to disrupt the, the genes, to do all of these particular things, the chemtrails, the cloning, you know, everything you can think, of, cryogenics, you know, everything for them is based on the reptilian portion of the brain. So they actually have psychological. Um, you know, um, tendencies towards being a psychopath and a sociopath. Hmm, okay, right. Uh, you know, and I'm talking about those who have calcified pioneer glands. Right? And let me be clear about this: um, the largest amount of those who have calcified pioneer glands are the Europeans. We're talking about 60, 80 percent. But then oh. we're also talking about the 35 percent of Asians, as well as also the five to 15 percent of so-called Africans. Um, truthfully, none of them I want to be around. Mm-hmm. They're not quite human, they're mankind. And right. And there's a soul development which that must take place. And when we talk about soul, we talk about feelings. See, I didn't, as a child, I didn't have to have a book in order to tell me what was right and what was wrong. Right. I was able to feel what was right, what was wrong. I instinctively knew that if I got hurt, and if someone did the same thing that I got hurt from doing, I would not want them to get hurt doing what I just did. So instantly, I was able to um, be empathetic or and sympathetic to a person because um, doing to others is others that have them to do unto you. So that's a that's a soul. Many of these people, these calcified pineal glands, have not reached that level of soul development. Matter of fact, the pineal gland being calcified is equivalent to being third eye blind. Meaning, in the yogi traditions, if you get John White's book, The Kundalini, if they raise the Kundalini and the pineal gland is calcified and they do not decalcify it before doing so, then they can actually spontaneously combust. 
wow. mean basically that they burn the internal energy, which was over 6,000 degrees in temperature, will burn them up and leave nothing but their damn ankles. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of cases of that. Yeah. Exactly. Blow, yeah, blow yeah. right up. <laughs> right, and none, yeah. and none of those cases, and none of those cases are so called blacks. Yeah. There's a um, girl, a white girl, is you say pale girl, Albion, who actually wrote a book called Spontaneous Human Combustion. You might be able to get the book from offline. I can't remember her name now, but she stated that all the cases, studies, and research you have done, not one Mexican and not one so called black. You know what I'm saying? In other words, people of color have suffered from this spontaneous combustion. It has always been in European. Yeah. This is why the so study, is study of elements is very important. Mm-hmm. Right. And this is the reason why um, the yogi masters warned people not to mess with the kundalini or not to, um, you know, jump into it and, you know, go too far because you can suffer psychosis, you can suffer spasms, you can suffer um, nerve damage, you can suffer spontaneous human combustion. And it's not human, it's mankind. So spontaneous mankind combustion. If you cannot handle those particular things, because we're talking about 6,000 degrees reaching up to 2 million degrees. So it's like the surface of the sun, which is 6,000 degrees in temperature. And then as it spreads out, it reaches a temperature of 2 million degrees. Mm-hmm. It's the same sun that's within you called the Kutalini, or that personified solar energy. This is why you use your breath to take in the solar or the sun or the star energy so that you can make it swell up at that 19 degree angle or 19.4, 19.5 degree angle, which is at the base of the spine, known as your bone, which is the sacral bone area. And as it becomes alive and revigorated, it comes through those particular chakra system, and it forms like the caduceus that's on the hospital, symbolizing healing. But if you don't have that activated pineal gland, which is that ball on top, for those serpents can touch it. That's why if you notice on the medical symbol, them serpents don't touch that um, that ball. Well, on the original one, it did. On our symbol, the serpents touched the ball. They touched the pineal gland. They touched because that's the seat of the soul. In order to produce those wings, which is those which is the wings, which symbolizes enlightenment, which symbolizes um, infinite consciousness, which which is the expansion of the mind. So, um, you know, these are definitely some of the things that we have to go over. Um, Brother Olabala, um, I definitely want you to jump into that topic. Yeah, also, you know, when you look at the lotus flower, it also represents, you know, that that uh, awakening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, I'm, and, you know, there's a lot of things, uh, a lot of things that we have to uh, look at. Uh, a lot of times people try to get around uh, the word indigenous and use the word native, you know, because right. it's one thing, uh, it's like, think about it. The Europeans been here, uh, what we would call the Americas, uh, for like, you know, you could say over over 400 years, 500 years. Right, so yeah. they would they would be considered natives because you know they've been here over five hundred years, but they're not indigenous. Okay, right. Yeah. You know, you know, because a lot of times people say, "Well, we've been, well, you know, we've been here." Yeah, you've been here, but when you got here, someone was already here. So mm-hmm. you may be native, like somebody may say, "I'm native." Someone may say, "I'm native New Yorker." I'm a native New Yorker, but you was you came to New York. You wasn't originally from here, so that separates native, the word native from indigenous. You can be native to an area, but not necessarily indigenous. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's right. You could 
You could have been there for five, five hundred years. Yeah, you've been here for five hundred years, but we've been here for millions of years, billions of years. Right. Right. Exactly. So what is that compared to uh, millions of years? Compared to their five hundred years, you know? Yeah. Nothing. You know, exactly. you've been here. I mean, exactly. five years is pretty long. Five years is pretty long. But you think about the people that was here here for thousands of years. You know, millions of years. So you know, so you know, they all use the word native. You know, native. But you know, it's a difference between native and indigenous. That's why that word indigenous is more powerful. You know, mm-hmm. you know, it's like a lot of times people say Native Americans. I'd rather you be indigenous than use the word native because, you know, indigenous has more more weight because, you know, I've always been here. I just didn't, you know, just come here, you know. That's why sometimes I use aborigine indigenous. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, you know. Uh, uh, the, way, the way the system was talking about the word indigenous, was, it should talk like it was negative. Yes, it, it is um, based on their, their um, the way in which they give it, brother. Like I said, it means poor, right? Or as it can't pay, or as you can't pay for something, or you pay your bill, or you, they say, well, fill up a digit form. Okay. In other words, you a broke ass nigga. Oh, okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but they are twisted, it, though. What you trying to say? Right, exactly, exactly. Because um, indigent don't have nothing to do with being poor. That's that's just the word that they use in there. Remember, we once have cognitive and you have denotive uh, meaning of words. Denotive meaning means that actually what it means. And I gave you actually what the word indigenous and indigent means. Uh-huh. However, anyone can come along and say, well, you know, I see it like this, and then. That criteria, because everybody starts to say and use it the exact same way. So okay. now indigent becomes the negative meaning of the word poor. Okay. But not the original meaning. That's not the denotive meaning of the word. Okay. We're talking about etymology now. Right. We're talking about etymology. We're not talking about, um, you know, just wordplay. We're talking about actual etymology. Uh-huh. Okay. Sure. Yeah, usually when you get into etymology, people always say, man, you know, man, what's all the wordplay? Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah same, in the same way the word yeah. Moorish and more, you know, uh, right. Moorish being an adjective, you know, but the, uh, I guess a lot of people are, are, are conditioned by studying the, the, set, the Circle Seven and, and the uh, Moorish literature. That, uh, call themselves Moorish Americans. Right. You know. But but and, just uh, like the word Irish, the word uh, English, um, those words, um, even with the ish, denotes that there's a relationship. Um, like, for example, the word more, um, when you say Moorish, um, not only does it mean like a more or kind of, of like a more kind of of a more, it also means related, you know, to a more. By um, in other words, national nation. Okay. You know, so we can say Moorish in the sense in which that denotes um, the original intent, which was talking about nationality. You know, what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. However, when you get to the once again to the um, cognitive meaning, it means nowadays. To be like a more, mm-hmm. or to be kind of mm-hmm. a more, right? Because the ish means to be like or to be kind of. That's the definition for it now within the Webster dictionary. However, um, originally it was tied to nationality by way of um, drawing or ish, you know, to be related to nation. So it's, so it's to be related to a nation. So Moorish means to be related to a nation. That's actually what it, just like the word um, Irish, all of those denotes to be related to a um, landmass or to a particular, um, you know, um, 
political status. Okay. Well, well that's what so nationality is, political status. So, so it's, 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 it's all right for me to, like, if I see two sisters on television, is it still all right for me to call them, well, there's two Moorish women? Um, You can, because that's the word Moorish is being used as, as a description in that particular sense. Okay. So it, it can be used as an as a, um, adjective, you know, because okay. that nowadays, ish, on any word, whether it's Moorish, Irish, you know that is an adjective, is a descriptive word. So yes, those are Moorish sisters. But of okay. course, you know we use the word okay. Moabitish or Moabite. Okay, right. Okay. Mhm. So if you right. don't like, the, you, know, you don't want to use the word Moorish because it can't be controversial. And you know we have some in the community who love controversy. Right. Can't explain explain nothing in detail, but love to have something to say. So, um, he's right, about you know, that. right. And he definitely be looking for stuff to talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Any little thing. Exactly. Now I wanted to talk about this um, executive order one one four nine zero that was on October the ninth, nineteen sixty nine, which actually was called the King Alfred Plan or the Rex eighty four plan because Ronald Reagan signed it back into um, office back in, um, or, you know, signed it back, back into, what, 1984. And um, this is what it says. It's talking about um, the so-called minorities. And uh, for those who don't believe that we're from here, well, Rex 84 says it, you know what I'm saying, best. Let me see here. All right, it says... Minorities throughout the various cities, and they go into the various cities to come out, can galvanize, you know, such as through the south, on up through the east coast, on across to Detroit and Chicago, and even into um, California. So basically, what they're saying is that we outnumber them in these particular rural areas, you know, what I'm saying, and urban areas. You know what I'm saying? And basically, we got them surrounded. That's basically what this is symbolic to. I mean, if you ever read the information, all right? But what it says is that that we are bound to this continent by heritage. All right? That we are bound to this continent by heritage and that there will be no asylum. In other words, we cannot seek asylum anywhere outside but here, and because of that, we'll be a formidable opponent. That's what it says, that we'll be a formidable opponent because we are bound to this continent. We are bound to this continent by heritage. So now, so all that going back to Africa, we couldn't do that. Oh, well, let's, go, let's go back to Africa. We're being mistreated here. Exactly. Right. 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 You see, right. Exactly. You don't have no way in order to lay our head like that. You know what I'm saying? Except for here. So, yeah, if it came down to it, you have to whoop some ass. And that's basically <laughs> what that was about. You know what I'm saying? That's what that, that's what that was about. Was um, the possibility of us, of us giving the ass whooping. Because they were saying that, look, yeah, you, you're going to have some people, you know, some um, folks out there fighting, but the vast majority of them are not going to fight. In other words, even the Europeans the vast majority of the Europeans are not going to fight. They're just going to sit back and like, damn. <laughs> so they were saying that. This is the whole thing about them crying, trying to create this race war. If they will read their own shit, then they won't even try to do it because they can never get the people to galvanize to the point of creating a so-called race war or civil war in this country. You know what I'm saying? You have to do something very detrimental nowadays. See, it's not like before. We had a reason to fight because there was slavery. We had abolition, right. abolitionists you know, who did not agree with slavery, who wanted slavery over. So, you know, they would go and, um, you know, and you know, we had the slaves, so-called slaves, who had some type of consciousness, some type of awareness, like Nat Turner, Gabriel Prosser, mm-hmm. Denmark Vesey, um, or even John Horse, you know what I'm saying, from the Seminoles, you know, who was um, so-called, you know, who was a so-called black tribe because the five... Um, 
indigenous tribes, such as civilized tribes, such as the Choctaw, the Chickasaw Creek, which is Muscogee, mm-hmm. the um, Seminole, and the Cherokee. All of us were related. We all was one family. We all was into a treaty together. If you get the Camp Holmes Treaty, all right, of 1836, the Camp Holmes Treaty or the Treaty of Camp Holmes, you will see that when we all combined and came together, we was known as the Wichita or Washita Nations. Mm-hmm. And this is not spoken of, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it is there. It is in history. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, um, there's a book that says the history of African American in Palm Beach County. Check this out now. It was from the Red Heron Magazine, April 26, May 10, 1995. It says, if you see Powell, Osceola, again, I wish you to tell him that I intend to send explorers and surveyor parties into every part of the country during the summer, and that I shall send out and take all the Negroes who belong to the white people, and he must not allow or the Indian Negroes to mix with them. You hear that? The Indian Negroes. Yeah. Tell him I'm seeing to I'm sending to Cuba for bloodhounds to trail them, and I intend to hang every one of them who dares not come in. This you can be assured is a Negro, not an Indian war. So here they are talking about the Seminoles. <laughs> okay? Here they are mm-hmm. in Florida talking about the Seminoles and they describing the Indians as being Negroes. <laughs> and saying huh. you you can't be sure is a Negro, not an Indian war. Mm-hmm. Okay, now now so now you know. Whew. All right, I, I, I'm just going to ask you what you think about that. <laughs> well, I, I, now, this is right. This is coming, this is coming from Major General Thomas Sidney. Joseph commanded U.S. military forces in Florida during the Second Seminole War of 1836. Mm. Mm. Okay. Well, I, I was, um, it reminded me of a movie I was watching. And the movie was made in 1940. The movie was named mm-hmm. Virginia City. Right, right. And uh, they had this brother on this uh, wagon. When the movie first came on, on a wagon, they both was riding mm-hmm. through the Confederate soldiers. And right. they were saying, oh, 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 hey, Sammo, Sammo, here comes Sammo, because the brother's name was Sammo. And Sammo right. handed, handed them they, they, his, his papers. Oh, okay, Sammo, here you go. But yeah, yeah, his papers checked all right. All right, Sammo, what you got back there, Sammo? We got to check your wagon. Well, we ain't got to do all that checking. Sammo, you can go ahead. What you got, though? Oh, got me some this and that, you know. And well, where you headed for, too, Sammo? Are uh, you going home? Yeah, I'm going home. Fix me some, you know, some good good food here, you know. Let's come calm down. Have a good day. Have a good evening this evening. All right, Samo, you can go ahead, Samo. Oh, I wish I could enjoy that food with you, Samo. Oh, I know you do. Samo went on about his business. But the other uh, Moors were slaves. And the right. better said, get back there. What y'all do? I told y'all to get back there. Do I have to get a whip to, a whip to y'all? Put a whip, get back there. He was so mean to exactly. them. But Sam and Samo was cool. Exactly, right? You know, I said he showed him this paper. I said, this was a, a free national war. That's right. This was a free, I don't know if and you ever same, saw that movie. But right, this and was the same a thing free national war. Yeah, yeah. The same thing was shown in the roots with Alex Haley. Yeah, the he same thing. Looking for to cut his, right, here they are looking for Kuta Kinde to cut his damn foot off. But yet, you just stopped the little boy and his dad on it, and they had a horse and a wagon, so that means um, they had money. They was able to, you know, and plus they was able to travel, and he asked them for their papers, and they pulled out their papers, and um, they continued on looking for, you know what I'm saying, for, um, you know, for, you know, for, for I guess you can say for Toby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now, I just put it, right, just put it that way. But, but they put it out there for us. They put it out there right. in 1940. They were still putting it out there then. Doing it right. like they're putting it out there. You know they didn't catch it then. And they still didn't catch it in the mm-hmm. 1970s. 
That's right. And even Chicken George, when he got uh, free, he came back, and his son was uh, still enslaved, and then he showed his papers. Uh-huh. That's right. And, you know, and, and, and it, but his son had to go back. He still, his son was still in slavery, you know, and uh, but he showed his papers. You know, and uh, but his son had to go back. So they showed mm, right. us little little things here and there, but we just couldn't put things together. You know, right? Yes. I mean, they were, they, exactly. were, they were dropping this on the people in 1940. I said, man, they were dropping this on people in 1940. I said, mm. man, they're trying to tell you, trying to they tell, tell us something. They tell the people <laughs> the name of that on movie again. Virginia City. It was a 1940, old, old Errol Flynn movie. 1940. Right. If you ever catch it, yeah, well, they get it. Huh. Yeah, but they were showing, you know, they showed in an Amistad. I mean, think about it. Why would they even take these people to court for anything? If they were so-called slaves, they should have just said, hey, man, take them and take them away and you know, put them to work. They actually held a trial for them for the Moors. Sure did. And, exactly. and Morgan and Morgan Freeman was one of the attorneys. And he to think about it. He That's was right. free. He was an attorney. Attorney. So I mean, what was up with that? <laughs> if they was the so called slave, why would they be tried in the court? That's you know, right. They said, take them in the back somewhere. Look, take them away. Get them to work. They they had a trial, a held held it for them, and uh, Morgan Freeman was one of the attorneys with with a European mm-hmm. by his side. So what was that all about? Morgan Freeman. They always have him in the movies too. And, and yep. always have him playing the free. They have him playing God. They have him playing um the teacher of Robin Hood. They have him always playing some role in which that he's doing some some teaching. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, oh, I yeah. just recently. Yeah, I oh, just go recently. Bruce Almighty part one and part two. You know. Oh yeah, I saw that. I saw that. He just recently said that Obama's not the so-called first black president. No, he's not. Exactly. Wonder where he got that from. Yeah. Wonder what he been he, reading. What he been studying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he played. He played a more in Robin Hood, so he knows what time it is. Oh yeah. Bingo, you get it. Yep, he played a more again, free man. Exactly. Yeah, he got to try to <laughs> beat him down, uh, driving yeah. Miss Daisy. I, I explained to him. I said, "No, that's not Morgan, Morgan Freeman. That's a you, you got to remember. He's an he's an actor. You know, he was playing a role. Yes, but that was not him. That was I don't know what his character is, but I know what his character is. It. Yeah, right. Well, but that was not his character. I'm, I've been watching him ever since I was little, you know, on the electric company. So, so you know, you you get to know somebody by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw him. I used to see him back then. Exactly. <laughs> back then, you know. So I mean, and all actors, yeah, yeah. all actors have to do research before they do a role. They don't just do a role; they do research on the role. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he had to have to do a, a background on the Moors and know the history even, to even get in that type type of mindset. They right. go into a certain mindset, a certain zone when they go into acting. They just don't take a role and just wink it. They do extensive research. If they if they do a stripper role, they'll go in the strip club and swing on the pole for a while or something, you know. They just don't do the role. They they do extensive research. So he knows what time it is. No doubt. No exactly. Doubt. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And um John Yeah. We read this article here. It says John M. Goggins it says the Florida Historical Quarterly, January nineteen forty six states the Seminole Negroes of Andros Island, Bahamas. Now check this out. Now, said the Indians who came to the to the Bahamas were black Indians, not white Indians, and they can and they came a long way according to tradition. 
It was constantly pursued through Florida by slave catchers, but Charles was stopped in one town for four to three years. However, it was not before long that they heard the footsteps of the slavery getting closer and closer, causing them to flee again. Finally, they arrived at the Cape, Florida, and felt that it's the last place as far as can be determined. And so, you know, they ended up fighting. You know what I'm saying? But they also, um, by 1810 and 1820, it says at Cape Florida, black Indians met many workers from the Bahamas. After a short while, a group decided to go to Bahamas. They sailed eastward in the dugout canoes. The largest group was Scipio Bole, um, landed at Red Bay on the northern and northwest end of Andros. And and another smaller group landed on Jelsa K, north of Andros. Now, this is from coming from the Florida Historical Quarterly. So, you know, they're telling you that the um, ones who came here, the so, so-called Native Americans or the, or as we say, the indigenous people, they was the black Indians. That's how they refer to us as, the black Indians. Mm-hmm. Not the white Indians. <laughs> but if you notice, nowadays, the so-called black Indians can't even get recognized by the white Indians. Mm-hmm. They control of the damn um, BIA, you know what I'm saying, or the Bureau of um, of Indian Affairs. Mm. You know, yeah. The white folks are the head. They determine who can get in and who cannot. Mm. You know? So uh. you go and look at the Cherokee. The Cherokee over the last 20 years have been kicking um, the so-called black Cherokee out over and over again. But that's wow. because those so-called black Indians need to realize that they're Moors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, 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 the so-called white Indians, uh, they are not the original uh, indigenous people. No, they're the algamated ones from the Spaniards and from the different other ones. Yeah, they they are not. Whether they um Irish, whether they English, you know, exactly. When you look at Dutch. the new Diamond Phillips, uh, I heard he's supposed to be a so-called Indian, uh, but he he, he but he no he you you can't tell he's a Moor. I can't really say he's a Moor. You know. Right. Right. You know, uh, uh, other uh, uh, so-called Native Americans, uh, they're so, like I say, I can see why they call them white Indians, because they're so, they, uh, they're, they're, they're uh, pigmentation of their skin uh, so close to the Europeans, you know. Uh, well, right. you know. <laughs> right. Uh, but but uh, they, they well, you, they, very, you find, very few of them will admit, huh? But, but think about it. This was the 1800s where they had to um, do that type of thing. If you go and watch the movie Rosewood, you would see even on there when the brother who was a Mason got caught by the Europeans. Oh. You know, he kept he said he said, "Don't eat me, don't eat me." And um, the the um, cracker said, "Boy, you ain't no um, Seminole." Oh. Mm, I didn't because catch that. They, um, they yeah, I that. <laughs> in the movie, yep. they showed you that they were eat niggas. And so the brother who was a mason, who was a moor, said, don't eat me. Don't eat me. And so they was making this distinction between the so-called... Now, he was married to a Seminole, you know what I'm saying, a monster, but he himself wasn't part of the Seminole tribe. In other words, you know, at that time, you know, you had us going as the artificial labels, Negroes, Blacks, and Colors, as right. we still do today. Right. So they was making a distinction that, okay, the Black Indians, who was known as the Seminoles, we don't fuck with them. We don't eat them. But you niggas, we're going to eat your ass. <laughs> in, in the uh, movie uh, Long Ranger, in the movie Long Ranger, they was eating uh, so-called Indians or Moors. Yeah. 
guy, he, yeah, the, in, the, in the Lone Ranger, the guy was eat, eating them. Mm. Yeah, they put they put the Lone Ranger in a whole different uh, format, didn't they? Yeah, he was. Oh, yeah. yeah, he was eating. Oh yeah, and that's the reason why um, um, Johnny Depp played Tonto because it means stupid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was acting <laughs> stupid too. Exactly. Wow. He was acting stupid, man. If I could, uh, no, I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> oh man, it was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he needed a good slap. In other words, what I was saying. <laughs> he was just, uh, he, I mean, it sh- he showed a lot of intelligence, but they downplayed it with some stupidity. Uh-huh. Right. You know, he showed he showed a lot of bravery. But he downplayed it with the stupidity. It's like he could do something good, and then they, then they, then something stupid happened, and just downplayed it. Oh man, you know. Mm. Right. Well, yeah. you that, almost look intelligent that time. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so you almost look intelligent that time, my bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean that's, that's the reason why you put it out. They're still trying to push that, you know. That damn near white, you know, Indian thing, and um, as we know, you know, only reason why they get even calculated as having some type of um, Indian within them is based on the consensus in which that they have determined, which is about one sixteenth, you know what I'm saying, um, of Indian blood. You know what I'm saying? Now that's one within sixteen damn generations or sixteen people, you know, or several generations. You know, and you can come up and, you know, after four damn generations, talk about you still got some Indian blood in you. <laughs> You're still talking that foolishness. Yeah. yeah. Just like you know, the Avatar movie, they, they marry into the families. A lot of, a lot right. of them marry into the families, you know, like in the movie Avatar, at the end, he married into the family. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, they uh, uh, I guess they're trying to. No, no, they just still don't know. Uh, I would, I don't know when they're gonna wake up to the fact that we are the Aboriginal Indigenous people of this of this land. Uh, people like us, you and I, you, me and Dr. Eileen, you all, Lala Bala, we, we uh, go to the movies and see these things, and we enjoy them, but not. In the same way, the rest of the audience, or what we should say, so-called blacks enjoy them. Mm. Right. Not in the same way. I take it personal. I take it personal, and I get very offended. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's uh. Huh. Oh like man. I said, like I said, Johnny, well, I, know, I, I want to slap Johnny Depp. I'm about to say, I know you got offended with that shit. I wanted to slap Johnny Depp. I, I, like I, I haven't even watched it. I haven't even watched it yet because I'm like, okay, they still pushing this damn uh, white Indian shit. So that was the I first thing. Well, I didn't even watch. Right. I know you did. I was like, I was just, you know, but, it, it, you know, it's like, man, I, you know, you know, just talking about it, just like, man, you know, and it's just more of the uh, trying to you know, pump that image so people won't have that connection, you know. Why now? Why Why all of a sudden now you want to make the Long Ranger? Why now? You could have made any movie. Why that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, because, you, of course, you know what Tano means. So what are you What are you really trying to say in here? Right. You know, I mean, you could have, you, and they know what Tano means. So what are you trying to really say here? What are you trying to What are you trying to do? You know. And what is, exactly. what is what, What's up with this chemo savvy? What's up with that, <laughs> that turn? <laughs> Did they tell you what chemo savvy means up in there? Uh, man, it's supposed to make big friends. I think he did. It's I just make good friends. I think he did, but I, I just now, I don't was, know why you're. I don't know why you're. I don't know why your girlfriend would call you stupid, but you know, 
I mean, I, I guess, you know, um, I've been in arguments with my homeboys, and I guess we called each other stupid at one point in time, but, you know what I'm saying, I, I didn't make that their name. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, but think about it. But think about it. Um, is it Tonto in the native's language? The, the, uh, yeah. the indigenous, indigenous person's language? Was that Kimosabi? What la- yeah, no, uh, no, Tonto. What what language is that? Um, I believe Pueblo, Pueblo, somewhere around in that area. Okay. Of Arizona. Is, uh, is, is the it Pablo. indigenous people's language? Right, Pablo. Right, I believe it is. Now, if if that is you, why would he, knowing the language, accept that? I mean, this is like you calling someone who speaks Spanish, uh, something in Spanish. They understand that, mm-hmm. and they would accept. And they would accept that. Mm-hmm. Now right, they're using like another me. language. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's like me walking around calling 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 a nigga puta. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you know what that mean, right? <laughs> Man, you know, and he just you calling him a name. And that's an insult in his own language, and he just accepts that, and he hangs out with you. Cool. Right, and you mm-hmm. call him Kimo Sabi, good friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the long ranger, he was real stupid. He, he really couldn't do. He really wasn't nothing. He was. He was an idiot. He right. wasn't no real hero. He was a. He was a. He was a. He was a coward. He was a. He was a fool. He wasn't no real hero. Not really. Well, you- he wasn't no real hero. He was so he was a he was a he was a joke. He was. He was well, you know, that was, you know, that was, the, face. No. That was the European Wild Wild West of Zorro. You know what I mean? And um yeah, yeah they have a little sidekick. You know, then later on rendition is the Batman and Robin thing. You know, they always got to have a little sidekick, you know, little you know, sidekick yeah. that always got to, you know, be your backup. Holy yeah. shit, Batman. You know, you know. the more was the more was the more was the one who held it down. See, as much as he may have been betrayed as a fool, he really was really keeping the whole thing together because the Long Ranger was really the joke. Mm-hmm. He was really the one that was more intelligent and had more courage. Right. Mm-hmm. And, was, and was more spiritual. Because mm-hmm. if it wasn't for him, it wouldn't have been, the Long Ranger wouldn't even have been alive. No, mm. many many a day. No, you say you know? his life many days, many a day. You know, so it's it's you know, it's a it's it's it's, it's, a, it's just something else. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I I I notice uh, a lot of the uh, so called cowboy western movies. Uh, I know the ones that were show lately. I know a lot of them show a lot of dark, so-called Native Americans, but they never really explain to them why they are so dark. But I come from right. them amalgamating among uh, the original Moors of this land. Exactly. Exactly. You know, because I saw a lot of photographs, uh, even in, in the book The First World Order, that uh, uh, even my great great grandmother. Uh, she's Choctaw. They they were uh, dark, you know, dark complexion, indigenous Moors, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, her name was East Star, East Star. And I said, what? Mm-hmm. I heard they first told me that. Her name was East Star yeah. Doss. East Star. I wonder why mm-hmm. did they name her that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, okay. I know East, what time it is with that. East Star. East Star. You know, F Star. A star. Esther, Reagan, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. check this out. In another book, or West Palm Beach, um, Senatorial Reflections, written by H.J. Robert, M.D., is mm. what he said. He says, my own researches relate to some unique um, medical aspects of African Americans confirmed that the high frequency of Indian blood. In personal studies, black patients 
a significant number knew of his Seminole or Cherokee ancestry. Now, that is mm. from the um, National Medical Association of 1964. Now, there's another joint that says, um, it says the Spanish refers to slaves who had joined Native Americans as Maroons, were Maroon. Now, when we went to Mexico, um, I was doing the, my wife and I was doing a lot of walking around and show, you know, I mean, we, we was doing, we was walking all over the place. We was looking for the Omex, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We were walking everywhere. Where the Omex? We, 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 we need to find the Omex, you know? Um, and when we started saying it, we started running into them. Of course, you know, you had to go to the mall and get them. You know, that's where you're going to find the Omex at. They at the mall, <laughs> just like <Right>. we are. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, hey, we don't change no matter where we go, yo. We still the same. So, one of the brothers, one of the brothers asked me to come in, right? And he was a Masonic brother, and he said, he said, why y'all believe in Jesus? And I said, uh, what you mean? He said, y'all believe in Jesus. Why y'all believe in that? I said, oh well, Jesus is nothing more than the sun in the sky with the twelve zodiac signs, symbolic to the twelve disciples. And he mm. said, he just, you know that? You know that? I said, yeah, I know that. He said, how you know that? I said, because I read my study. I mean, I mean that's that's my field. I'm a, you know, I'm a um historian, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm a sociologist. You know, those are my field of research and study, you know, in college. And so he said, man, man. he said, then why the rest of your people believe that? I said, oh, you talking about deaf, dumb, and blind Negroes? Oh, because uh, they want to. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so, so I asked him, I said, so I, so I said, I said, I said, well, um, I said, how y'all see? He said, the same way that you just said, he is the um sun up in the sky and the twelve zodiac signs. He said that's Jesus and his twelve disciples. I said, exactly. I said, but even more exactly. pertinent than that, I said exactly. the soul is embedded inside of the pineal gland inside your head, and there's twelve pair of cranial nerves that sits in a circle around it. And he jumped back Ooh. and looked at me some more, like. You know that, L.A., yeah? <laughs> he said, you and, he, and, he, and he said, you are on it. He said, you are on it. I said, he said, how come your people can't be like you? I said, they could if they only listen. Yeah. I said, tell me. I said, I, said, I said, what do y'all refer to us here in Mexico? You know, so do y'all call us Negroes or what? I mean, what y'all, you know, how y'all refer to us as a people? And he said, oh, we call y'all Moreno. Moreno. Wow. Pay attention. The word is Moreno. Moreno. Uh Yeah. This is what Mexicans in Spanish call us. They do not refer to us as Negroes because the Negro is the object. Yeah. Like my black computer. My black computer. Right. My computer is black. That's an object. Yeah. So I use the word Negro, you know, to an object. That's why you when you go to um, a computer store such as Staples or one of them, and you'll see the words, and you see in Spanish the word Negro when they were talking about a black computer. When they when they were talking about the description mm-hmm. of the computer, they come out. They use the word Negro. They don't use the mm-hmm. word Moreno. The word Moreno is purposely meant for those of brown complexion. So we are brown mm-hmm. complexion. So they refer to us Mexicans refer to us those who have knowledge of self refer to us as Moreno. You know uh, the, the movie, movie uh, American movie. Me. The movie American Me, oh, but, right. uh, uh, but, 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 but 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 about prison, but the prison movie. Yeah, I remember but, that. Right, right. But the Mexican mafia, they said, who, who do you 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 think who slipped that man that dope, that Moreno in there? That's, uh, that's what he meant. That Moreno, he did. Yep. yep. Yeah, I said they call us Moreno. Yeah, they refer to us as Moreno. Yeah, yeah but that's horse. Yeah, but that should be an adjective. The word Negro should be an adjective, too, because if you uh, get some Goya beans and get some black beans, That's right. it'll be what it Negro something. Bingo. Right. Exactly. It says Negro. So Negro is used to imply an object as talking about an object, not a human being, not a proper noun. Negro, yeah. even in Spanish, is not a damn proper noun. It's an adjective. It's a description. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I, now, yeah, like right now, Mexicans <laughs> now Mexicans know and understands the difference. Then why can't your black ass? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Why can't you more ass? Okay. All right. <laughs> Mexicans constantly constant telling in California, constantly telling us who we are. You know, right, right. but no, I'm black. Yeah. I'm African American. So, uh, right, right, uh, right. So, so. Exactly. Mm. Well, see, that's why when you go to the word American, um, it's clear. Um, Ola Bali, you have your dictionary near you. Read that eighteen. Um, what is that? Eighteen thirty-seven of eighteen. Um, um, what 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 year is that that you read that American uh, word from? Uh, it was, it was the, the uh, eighteen. It was eighteen twenty. I don't have it. I don't have it on me right 18, now. Eighteen twenty-eight. Because I got it. Eighteen twenty-eight. Eighteen twenty-eight. Yeah. Well, well read that show. definition for us. Um, you got like, it? Read that for us, brother. Um, brother. Um. Um, L, if you have it on you there. Okay, I don't, I don't have it on me. It's on my, my bookshelf. I can go to my bookshelf and get it right quick for yeah, you. Yeah, go and get it, bro. Wait, wait, okay, yeah, brother, hold yeah, up. We'll wait minute. <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. We ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I, um, as well, a matter that's, of that's fact, kinda messed um, up. you know, and I think they play games with the English. See, because it's one thing when you deal right. with English. You play a lot of games. But when okay, you, I'm back, brothers. When you, I'm back here. Let me see what I, I highlighted it. Yeah, I highlighted when you deal it. With, right. Hold, hold. Yeah, when you're dealing with other languages, other dialects, you know, right. you you can really get to the root of things, you know, in, in different exactly. in different dialects. Because the, notice in the Spanish, you have different words. So you say, well, nigga, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amarano, but yeah. in English, They'll just throw one word at you and, and you know, have you stuck, mm-hmm. you know? Exactly. Are you ready for the definition? Yes, sir. Got it right here. Well, well hold, on before we get to, hold on. Before we get to the definition, let me play this commercial and then come right back and then hit him up with the death. All right. Okay, good. All right. All right now. This is on the radio. Final lead. Final lead. We are on the air. No doubt. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We're going to into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We're going to talk about what's taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. And we in the building. More shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Now, it makes sense. It's the hottest day of the week. Pushing the levels in time, order, and importance. Some of them are in the market, working for instruments. Every state of human concerns in existence, and they definitely must do quantity or distance. System regulates the brain about specific things that we make on how to do a natural repair with the Brother L, 
tell them Joker's playtime is over. What you got for them? All right, now, here we have it here. It says American, pertaining to America. American, a native of America, originally applied to the aboriginals or copper colored races found here mm. by the Europeans. Mm. I'll say it again. Found here now, by the, the Europeans. Now is, that, now, is that not the same definition that we basically read with the UN stating about indigenous people? Yes. yes. Okay, read that one more time for everybody okay. so they can get the connection. Okay. A native of, a native of American, America originally applied to the aboriginals or copper colored races found here by the Europeans, but mm. now applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. But now applied. The Native American <laughs> must always right. exalt the pride of patriotism. Mm. Mm. They did a switcheroo on us. Yes. Uh-oh. He, he done. He then included himself into the scenario. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. So he included himself as an American, but but yeah. notice he still cannot include himself as being indigenous mm-hmm. <laughs> or Aboriginal. Right. The American Dictionary right. of the Aboriginal. of the English Language, Noah Webster, eighteen twenty eight. Eighteen twenty eight. God Almighty. So, <laughs> all right. So we got that science right there, right? Oh yeah, and we okay. read for you the United Nations. We read for you the United Nations, where it specifically said that those having historical continuity here in the Americas on their land before the conquest and the settlement of their territories by the Europeans. That was not my definition. That was the United Nations definition. Mm-hmm. And now you have the American Webster Dictionary definition. For the word American, in which that it originally applied to the Aboriginal colored skin copper natives. Mm-hmm. All right now, now we can take a penny for many shades. There's six, there's so-called sixteen shades to black, as they would say within the Nation of Islam and um, Nation of Gods and Earth. Sixteen shades to black. That means that we can take a penny, and in the various shades of the penny, we can match you up. And see if you are natively from here. That's basically what we're saying, all right? Or have that native blood in that sense. But we know uh, Abraham Lincoln. You could do your research on Abraham Lincoln. He was a Moor. He was part of the Melungeons, which mm. is another misnomer name that they have given. You know what I'm saying? You know, with the word Melungeon means something dark and dust, dusty and dirty. But yet the word Mel is Greek, in which that means black. Mm. You know, short for melanin. There we go again. But yet, when you look up, mm. when you look up, but when you look up, melungeon is something negative. You know, so this is why we have to make the, the difference between um, the two. All right? And don't get offended, you know, by our usage of terminology or wordage. You know, um, we're trying to bring everybody where they at into this information. So, let me see here. There's some more information. Um, it says the so-called blacks, assisted by the Indians, had become daring, and from want of proper knowledge of the country, the parties which I've sent out have always become unsuccessful. They appear to have lost sight of the first grand object, the conquest of Providence. It is doubtful whether the Patriot Army will ever revive again. All right, this is because the um, Indian War. And this is actually coming from um, General Andrew Jackson, who actually did, during that time period, created what was known as the, ter- the, the Trails of Tears, in which that over 10,000 so-called blacks were with the Cherokee you know what I'm saying? Part of the so-called black Indians, who was the Moors, was with them during this time period, who was driven out from the um, Carolinas in Georgia. Right? Matter of fact, it says 
the United States gave land grants and trading rights amongst the Seminoles to American <laughs> citizens. The British responded by training a force of nearly 300 Indians and African Americans. Their position at the mouth of Apalachicola was dubbed the Negro Fort. So, it was 300 Indians and African Americans. In other words, these so-called black Indians. And they named, and these were the Seminoles, and they named it the Negro Fort. That was the name of Fort. It was mm. Negro Fort. <laughs> wow. But yet they trained 300 Indians. So, got, so you must understand that they must have been some dark-looking ones. Right? Mm. And they... And see, this is the thing. When they start talking about the mixing and all these different things, understand is that as Brother um, L have already broken down, get the book J. Rods about sex and race. Get the book Missing History, uh, Missing Pages of History. Get the book What They Never Told You in History Class like in, um, in Duke Kim and Kush. Mm-hmm. In all of those books, it tells you that the original inhabitants of America were blacks. All right? So the Moors origi- um, uh, um, inhabited the Americas first, North, Central, South, and the adjoining islands, known as Americana or the Caribbeans. We inhibited all of this first for hundreds and thousands and thousands of years. So what we're talking about is the various impacts on which that has occurred over the years with us mixing back in with our indigenous selves. Once we mix out, we end up mixing back in. So if we mix in with the Spaniards, or we mix in with the um, so-called lighter Indians, uh, which are the Mongolian Indians who came down from out of the Bering Strait, from out of, um, of Siberia, you know, saying from um, what, what they refer to as Russia and you know Asia, on around through coming down into Alaska, coming down into the Americas, you know, into the western portion. You know, we extend with the Mongolians, and that's how we ended up getting the Mongol traits. But the Omex, who came to South America, came up into the interior of Mexico, came up into the Mississippi Delta, all the way across into the south, all the way up the eastern seaboard, all the way across to Chicago, Illinois, or Chicago, Illinois, and Detroit, all the way across there, and then all the way in the... In, um, in California, you know, all of these so-called people were Moors. <coughs> it was the same black who was here, uh, descended from the Omex 6,000 years ago, descended from the Folsom 75,000 years ago. And this is all coming from National Geographic magazine. Um, also, you can get um, David Chowdhury's book uh, on the lost um, or the ancient um, lost worlds of the Americas, something like that. And also the Lost Realms written by Zachariah Ascension when he writes on the Omex, not just being the Anunnakians, but all um, be, and the Anunnakians being the descendants, you know, and the descendants being the Omex, you know, which he speaks about in that book. So that ties us back to that Anunnakian Sumerian legend right there in the Lost Realms. He tells you that um, that the Omex were not just the you know the oldest civilization in the Western Hemisphere, but we was the Omex. We were descended from them. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. From the um, from the Anunnakians, I should say. You know what I'm saying? And you know, a lot of people want to talk about the Anunnakians. Well, the Anunnakians, you know, they came down and you know, in the group of fifty and so forth, and they populated and they made Lulu, which was the, you know, um, you know, man in his image and after his likeness and blah blah blah, and all that good stuff. Well, Mm -hmm. they tell you um, you in the book who the Anunnakians were and their descendants, and they were the Omex. In other words. Um, the Omex are descended from the Dogons from the Mali, from the, out of Mali, who was actually in Egypt 8,000 years ago or 6,000 BC, uh, before Christ, you know, even though, you know, before the Christian time. And it tells you, you know what I'm saying, of that lineage. We're the ones of the high priests of the order of Anu or On. We're the ones who built the pyramids. We're the ones in which that built the mound. So, hence the mound builders in which that be now become known as the washer tour. So, this is what all of this is actually connected to. All right? Um, Simmons for the removal of the Seminole Negroes preceded that the Indian removed. As early as 1821, the Florida Indian agent said to the Maroon, which are the Negroes, 
who lived amongst the Indians that it would be necessary to remove from the Florian um, the, um, um, this group of lawless freebooters amongst who runaway Negroes will always find a refuge. Although he admitted that if force were employed, the Indians will always take the Negroes part. In other words, if they was trying to, um, if they was, they can never get the um, Indians to betray the Negroes. Mm. We need some good. We, we need. Where, where, where the hell is the Seminoles at now? God damn it! Damn, we. That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put on. You gotta put on a no, no snitching shirt for people to not snitch. Exactly. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. We, we, we got to put on no snitching skirts. You know what I'm saying? All types of shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it says it was. It was soon recognized that it was impossible to persuade the Indians to rid Florida of the serious nuisance by selling their Negroes because of the Indian serious attachment to them. The bodily removal of Indians themselves was increasingly uh, regarded as the only solution of the Negro problem. And that same Negro problem went all up into um, the Mohawk Conference where they was talking about still the Negro problem, but now they was talking about it in the sense of the educational system. Hmm. You know, hmm. so wow. when people look up the Negro problem of the on um, the Mohawk um, conference, they find the same sentiments. You know hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, there's a serious Negro problem going on. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and 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 the Negroes don't know they Moors, so that's the problem. <laughs> and it, and, and it's sad. And, you know, a lot of them go to more house too. Mm-hmm. And they say, oh, 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 um, what's more house? Well, that's a, a black university. Wow. <laughs> and they, and they, how they miss that? They, you, more your house. school is more house university, mm-hmm. and you said it was a black university. Wow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a black university. Wow, mm, 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 mm. man! So, I mean, uh, so if you was on a game are. show, you would have you would have been that close to winning the million, but not close enough. <laughs> 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 wow! Oh that, man! And and then they got the colors, you know, on on maroon, which is the color of of the feds and the more house is talking about Alhambra of Spain, because that's the more house or the or the or the red house. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, and they got a team called the Maroons. You know, because they got a few teams, uh, and one of the teams is called the Maroons. I mean, like how, you know, how many clues are they going to give you? <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Man. That's sad. Yes, it is. That is really sad. Mm. More wow. out of body. Yes, it is. Huh. Right in front of right, right in front of their faces. I mean, man, that's the whole point. They put everything right in our face. They don't hide anything anymore. They no. put it right in the face because we so dumbed down. It's, it's nothing registered. You have. You know, rappers walking around with, with uh, uh, feathers. You know, Jay Electronica, he putting the feathers on P. Diddy, and uh, you know, right in right in the concert. What's that all about? Nobody did any investigation. Like, why 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 is dude why does brothers walk around with a with a feather on? Yeah, why feathers? Why feathers? You know, yeah, why what? You know, they didn't they do an investigation like. Why is he walking around with that, uh, you know, even if they don't know what it is? What's that thing on his head, you know? You know Mex- Why Mexican, is he walking around with that thing? Mexicans constantly calling us Marinos. Why? Yeah. Anybody ask why? Question, why they call us Marinos? Why? You know? Yeah. Why, why? Is, why is that? Oh, man. And when he put it on P. Diddy's head, P. Diddy didn't keep it on that long. And he and, and he had respect for it enough to say, yeah, I'm not gonna just throw it down, but you know, I'm gonna really have respect for this thing. Like, you know, he put it down in a way, you know, I, I don't I, I don't remember a lot of the footage 
But I remember he, he took it off, like, you know, let me take this thing off, you know. I don't want to just, you know, disrespect this, this, this headdress, you know. Right. <laughs> you know, why did nobody say, man, what what is that? What do you call that thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a Shriner's hat he got on. That's a Shriner's. Oh. Yeah. Is he a Shriner? Is he? he yeah. Old? <laughs> yeah, what's that all about, you know? Oh, boy. It's just, oh, boy. It's just an investigation. <laughs> you know? Mm. Yeah. It definitely calls for investigation more. Yes, it does. Yeah. Oh, man. And, and uh, uh, I mean, if the Mexicans can, can recognize us as Moors, how come we can't? Why well, so hard to good... tell us on people that they're Moors? <laughs> well, like I was saying before, um, it, in the language, they they have different words that mean different things. Where they, mm-hmm. they they know clearly that when you use Negro, it <laughs> is an adjective which describes the thing, and when you Translate Negro, it translates as black. Like I said, if you get a can of Goya beans and you get black beans, it's Negro something. I forgot what the word is for beans, but it's Negro something, you know, the Spanish word for beans. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously Negro means black, and it's an adjective because it's describing Mm -hmm. the beans. A coat or a table, a chair or something. <clears throat> but then you, yes, yes, yes. So, but but then you'll say, okay, what what is your term for someone who looks like me? They'll say Moreno. Mm-hmm. They won't. They not. They won't say Negro. So no. it's very it's very clear. But see, the, the other thing is is very. But you ask them, what does that mean? They'll say black, but to be honest with you, really, it just this means more. Right. It really means right. more, but they but they play with right. the definition too because if they say it means more, they gonna they gonna right. they gonna give it up. Mm-hmm. So they'll say it means dark, it means this, it means <coughs> you know whatever mm-hmm. dark a dark complexion pe- person, because uh, yeah. they already got a word black, which is. Negro, so that has to mean because you already got a word for black in the language or the dialect. So either that means something else, or it's a different kind of dark complexion person, you know. But really, it means more. This is a, a Spanish word for more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they're not going to tell you that straight up, so they'll say, well, it means dark, it means, you know. Right. And which that the closest one for the English language or English. Yeah. You know, just like you, the word more in Morehouse University is M-O-R-E, which is like the French way of uh, spelling it. hmm You know. So, you know, just like you have in... In French, you have for love or more, you know. So you mm-hmm. see, keep seeing here, sitting here in that word all around, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know, because when you think of anything pertaining to the Moors, you know, it, you know, we we uh, you know, what if what uh, forerunners, you know. So if you're talking about the Renaissance, you talk about literature, you talk about art, you talking about mu- mu- music, you talk about a- anything, you know, we was doing it, you know, we was the you know the the best lovers, you know, so of course they're mm-hmm. gonna have a word meaning uh you know, that connects with us. Right. You know, 'cause we were the best of all of uh, everything that you could think of. Of course, you oh, gotta yeah, have a word, a word in in the in the in the dialect 
that means uh, that connects what I uh, you know more in there. So you know, you know, because a lot of time they can't even raise their own children. You know, uh, a lot of us, you know, a lot of the sisters are, are taking care of their own children. So you know. They they really a lot of time are disconnected to even you know you know treating each other a certain way or uh, taking care of their children you know mm-hmm. is, you know so we always doing everything <laughs> you know mm-hmm. but yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, this is this is some deep information, you know. Um, and you know, and I always say, you know, uh, when I really got into uh, learning about, you know, my Moorish heritage, you know, I mean, I approach it from different angles, you know. I mean, right. But I I I really looked at. Uh, the history of Washita, and I said, man, you know, this this is uh, connects with, more with me. Aboriginal derived from <laughs> old Latin word origin, which means first and earliest known natural people, natural peoples, and pertains to their culture relating to their possessions, their customs, and their land. Aboriginal is an adjective which qualifies a marked and distinctive characteristics which confirms a connection to and a notes possession of the first natural people. Hmm. Aboriginal is distinct from and is opposite of immigrant. Now, what is an immigrant? Immigrant um, is, is a Latin word. It comes from the immigrantum, um, which means one who is not a native, but that which immigrates. And more specifically refers to a people who migrate from another place, country, or land to another land, place, or country as a settler. A settler is one who comes to and immigrates to another land with the purpose or intent to establish a colony in the land or place, not their own in origin. All right? So we know from the definition, the European is not the um, the origin of the Americans. No. You know? So um, we're going to we gonna, we gonna go into those closing remarks here. So I want, um, you know, definitely y'all can um, go into the information. Um, we got the closing remarks. For those that want to call in, call 626-414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. Call in now. All right. Um, Brother L, what you think about that? Well, it's just like I, I just read in the book here, the 1828. Um, it's their own English dictionary, American Dictionary of the English Language, 1828. So uh, that is... Uh, the so-called, well, I call them title Americans, which are Europeans, they're actually telling you themselves that they are not they are not indigenous or aboriginal of this land. So, uh, uh, like they say, with the proof is in the pudding, well, there you have it. They're telling you on, on their own selves, you know, that they're not the original Americans. So uh, they can take that the way they want to take it. Uh, as far as uh, I hope we did well, I believe we did some good tonight, as always. And I will advise all the audience to keep on t- tuning in on the First World Order video show. And you learn a lot of science here because we constantly drop it on you. They can't stop it because the consciousness is out here. It cannot be stopped now. It's too late. The Aquarian age. All right. Yeah. You know, uh, well, you know, I mean, we we pretty much uh, proved the fact that, yeah, we are the Americans. Mm-hmm. So we don't have to, you know, be ashamed of that particular term. And we can be, you know, uh, confident that, hey, man, you know, we were here. And and let's get into uh, doing what we need to do mm-hmm. to, you know, uh, put ourselves in a position to benefit from all that we have 
you know, as far as the rights that we have as, as the indigenous people, you know, but outside of proclaiming our nationality as Morris American, we are when we are not entitled to that which it rightfully belongs to us. Mm-hmm, no doubt. You know, because if you study the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, there are some great things being said in that declaration or, or, or those rights, which are inalienable rights. And uh, we can we can really benefit from proclaiming our nationality. You know. Uh, outside of that, all we can do is complain about what's going on and we're not being treated right and, mm-hmm. you know, oh, woe is me, you know, you know, no justice, no peace, you know, yep. Yep. walk around with a gun that you're not going to shoot because you're really scared and you're not going to really shoot. So, you know, stop front <laughs> like you're going to shoot. You know, right. you know, you know. Right. If you if you wanted to shoot, you'd already shot already. Right. You know what I mean? So, so you know, so we have to figure out different ways of of, of fighting. You know, because they, uh, and majority of the time they're not picking up guns. They're picking up pins, pins. They're picking up pins. And they're picking up pieces of paper. They're using their pins to war. So what is mightier, the sword or the pins? Because <laughs> most of the time they're picking up pins on us. They, they're beating us down with pins. Mm-hmm. So what's really going on? So, <laughs> so I'll say to all the people, who, uh, keep tuning in and um, go to Facebook. The Facebook group, More Divine and National Movement, that's our group. Become a member of the the Facebook group. Participate, and we'll keep you posted on what we're right. doing and upcoming, upcoming events. And tune in to First World, World Order Radio. No doubt. And um, we got a um, caller, 704-704. You're on the one. Peace to the more. Peace, guys. Peace, Peace more, guys. God. What's going on, man? It's Brother D, man. I try to get y'all a ring every week or two, you know. So I listen to the show every week, but sometimes I don't catch you to call in. It was a good show tonight, man. Y'all was building, y'all was going in, man. Yeah, I be trying cool. to school people on, you know what I'm saying, the Morris hatches and everything, but you know how these people are. But I'm staying focused on what I'm trying to do. I got my little guy here. He about to tell y'all peace, too. Tell the Morris peace, man. Peace to the Morris, man. All right. Peace. Peace. All right. Yeah, my little man, I'm trying to bring him up, man. But that's what I wanted to call y'all. Thanks, man, for the insight, man. It's been a good show tonight, man. Y'all went in. Oh, thanks. Right. Peace, 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 man. Peace. Peace. All right, brother Olabalo. I mean, it, it sounded like we did um 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 like like we did some things tonight or what? You did a little something. Oh, yeah. something? Oh yeah, definitely. You know, definitely. And I always look at when they when they cut us off or I get knocked off. I said, man, we must have been cooking. Oh yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, so I, that's how I look at it. You know what I mean? They say, you know, they uh-huh. always say, if, you know, if nobody ain't hating on you, you ain't doing nothing. That's right. That's what I be hearing sometimes. You know, so hey, that's that's all good. You know, I take that. Right. You know. You know. Kids, like like uh, brother L said, you can't stop it anyway. So hey, we gonna keep coming regardless. So hey, you know. Right, right. The cost is out here. <laughs> you know. It's out here. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For those who want to um, call in once again, we got nine more minutes left. We got six two six four one four thirty four thirty five. That's 626-414-3535. Give us a call. Ask a question. Do you need what if All right, we got um, area code 202. Area code 202, you're on the line. Peace, peace. What's good? Peace, peace, peace. peace God. All right. Uh, I'm the one. I don't know who controls the emails, but I'm the one looking for a 350 dually. 
<laughs> right, right, right. I got you. Man. Right. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's for everybody. Hit Salim up. If anybody run across, it's got to be on it like 180K. Diesel preferred. But um, anyways, do y'all have any experience setting up an LLC in however what type of way, like without getting, yeah. like, I guess without getting taxed or whatever? Because, right. well, you like, a LLC, uh, like, you like, have like to do it. Seminole. Right, you have to do it in Delaware or either in Nevada. Oh, you got to go to right. Delaware are, or where? Right, you have to do it in Delaware or either in, in Nevada. Um, that's what oh, you okay. do right. in order to not to be taxed or to be tax okay. exempt. Now, most of the other states in which that you do an LLC in, you have to pay like $200 or more annually just to have the LLC. Right. You know, right. so it has to be you, done. If, in, uh, right. And then, if of you course, set it you know, up you over there, the could you transfer? Right, right. Well, I mean, you can actually do it over the phone. You know what I'm saying? You just simply send um, your monies in, um, get the address and your mm-hmm. monies in, with the documentation with the download from off the um off the um Delaware website or either Nevada website or which that deals with the LLC, which is a limited liability corporation or company. So for those who don't okay. know what LLC is. Um what that means is that you're able to function as an actual corporation. Um and in those particular areas, um you're a tax exempt. You know what I'm saying? So hmm. you definitely want to check that out, you know what I'm saying? Um like you said, Delaware and the bottom, all right? Yeah, um, that's hot. Looking to, all right. Look into unincorporated associations. You also want to look into unincorporated associations. Unincorporated. Unincorporated associations. Right. Unincorporated. Right. All right. You take those to the bank that set up a business um, account um, that instantly puts you within the bracket of what is called a non-tax bearer. Um, or a non-tax, um, or, uh, a non-tax bearer, or what is it called un interest, um, unbearable interest. I think it's called. You know, what I'm saying so. That means the IRS can't just come in and start looking at your assets and start doing an audit on you. Right, like right. Okay. With, I got you. With, um, it's called a non-bearing interest account. So you want to get um, a non-bearing. Mm-hmm. That's what you would get. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, um, so look into that. So those are the two LLC. Um, that's if you want to do the corporation, incorporation, or either you know um, you do it with the articles, or either you do it you know with an unincorporated association or organization. So you want to check those two out. I appreciate it. Peace. 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 All right, all right. So, um, Brother Olabala, you back with us? Yeah, good. Yeah, you got me again. You getting good, brother. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. It's either going to be you or me. So, Brother L don't never yeah. get knocked off. He always on now. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason. For whatever it is. <laughs> Brother Tell don't never get settled. That's why I got to start. That's why I got to start. What's up with that? Yeah, what's up with that, brother? Yeah, I better change my my voice sound like Brother Al or something. (laughs) Maybe put a little more faith in me or something. Oh, you got enough faith, man. You got enough faith. Yeah, but that brother right. touched on something that I, I was thinking of too. You know, he was right on point because you know a lot of people want to uh, start corporations. You know, five hundred one c threes and different corporations, and when they when they're under the jurisdiction, you know, you know, how could you, you know, be free and still be right. under their jurisdiction? So right. he said, I'm glad that brother asked that question because I. I really want I wish we could do a whole show on that. Well, actually, we can. Um, and the best way to do it right now is, like I said, is the unincorporated organization, the unincorporated non 
um, nonprofit organization um, in which that you would go to the Secretary of State, pay about $5 for the form. Uh, once you get that, you fill it out. Um, then you call the, um, the IRS, get an EIN number for it. Then you go down to the bank, open up a business account. Then you start putting all your assets and all your um, property under that particular you know, business. And you don't function you know, any longer as an individual. You now function as a corporation. Or in this particular case, an unincorporated corporation. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Un- unincorporated, right. Unincorporated. right. Unincorporated. Right. Association of unincorporated nonprofit organization. Right. So in this case, you're doing it unincorporated. So uh, being that it's unincorporated, that means. Um, once again, you don't have um, the government don't have the same ability in order to come at you as they would a corporation. You are somewhat you you have a little bit more leeway. Mm-hmm. I say this is the way in which that Creflo Dollar and them did this because when Creflo Dollar when they went after Creflo Dollar a few years ago, you know they um the IRS couldn't go even they couldn't even go in his books and look so. I'm thinking that he had to um that they had to um transpire that into a um into a trust. So, you know, the next thing is to look into um putting together a trust. You know? Yeah, yeah 'cause I remember when they did I remember when they did that. They was they was looking at all them people's books. You didn't hear right. too much about it afterwards. Is that pretty much like the U C C's or no, no, not necessarily. I, I can't say they was functioning in that capacity, but um, I'm thinking it's the way in which that they had their um, church set up. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's the way yeah. that they had their church set up. Cause they got they got uh five they probably got five hundred one c three, but then they also have something that's for profit. You know, right. you know, like they like the rich people say, control everything, own nothing. Right, that's David Rockefeller. So definitely, that's what you want to do. So by yeah. putting everything into a trust, after you know, after you get detected, you know, that's that's exactly what happens. You own, um, you can you own um everything. You know, what I'm saying, um, at the same time, but and control it. You don't own, you know, but you control it. Put it that way. Mm. Yeah, so they say you can definitely. They say they, yeah, because they say, well, this is the churches. Uh, right. Rolls Royce mm-hmm. Church want me to Rolls Royce Oh the church is exactly. even, in, even in the nation mm-hmm. They said well this is belong to the nation This is belong to me This belongs mm-hmm. to the nation right. Exactly mm. Exactly Because so, it, it's a corporation So you know That's exactly. how they that's how they do it in the secular world As far as uh, Protecting their assets <laughs> Is under the corporation Mhm. Yeah. That's right. You better, you better get with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get with it. <laughs> I, st- I stay with the, the UCCs and the executive letters. I stay with those. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, That's why, why the prophet. That's why the prophet set up the temples. You know, the, letters, letters. Right. the way the way he did it. Not not the way that uh you know things is going on you know five hundred one c three because that's under the jurisdiction but yeah the way he yeah. set it up was perfect right that's yeah. why within some um within some states when you go and do a church affiliation or a church or a temple mosque or whatever that whatever it is um it's real simple you know they have you having to do your research, you know, on those particular things, you know, on trust. In particular, the best trust is like the way that you said Prophet Noble Drali did it, which was a pure trust or an express trust. Yeah. All right? That's what it's called, an express trust, you know, so a common law express trust. And um, that is definitely um, the way, you know, to go. Mm-hmm. Dealing with the law of the land. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the constitutional law. Right. 
Yeah. And like I say, the executive letter is the way to go. The executive letter and the UCCs. Well, the executive letter is, all that is personal. What that does essentially is to make your straw man civilist more tubes, which means dead in the eyes of the law. So that means mm-hmm. that um, in the court of law, they shouldn't be able to um, bring up, you know, Robert Anderson. You know what I'm saying? They can't bring that name up. You know, they have to refer to you as um, Mustafa Alamin L, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever the case is. So that's the reason why um, that's what that does. You know, and it expatriates you from any jurisdiction in which that they have already assumed to have over you, even though you don't have to expatriate, you know, by the way in which that they claim to do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because actually you're not a U.S. citizen to begin with. You're not mm-hmm. a 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment was never fully ratified based on the Dress Scott case decision. You are not a U.S. citizen, nor would you ever be. So these are the things in which that we have to understand and recognize. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Now I got it. Yeah. 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 But yeah. um, we get ready to raise up off of here, and um, matter of fact, um, any closing remarks before we go, y'all? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Bingo. But, but, yeah, I was saying, which one is the more? Is the more? Is the more? Um, what are you going to say more powerful, the UCCs or the executive letter? Um, Right now, any and everything works, brother. I mean, this okay. is the whole thing. Um, each thing is different field. One is common law, which is the executive letter, and the other one is dealing with amorality, which is maritime, which is dealing with commerce. So okay. you use um, um, you use each one respectively. There is not one more powerful than another one, even though they claim that, you know, that the... Um, Executive trust or the executive um, estate is, you know, what I'm saying is more powerful. But um, you know, there's many things in which that's going to be worked at. There's no one civil bullet. So it's, it's about us blitzing it and making everything work at the same time. We want everything to work simultaneously. Um, right. Hold on a second. Get area code eight one eight. Area code eight one eight. You on the line? Greetings, brother. Peace. Really mm-hmm. uh, I just had a quick question about the trust. Could you go into a little more detail than that? I guess I'm basically trying to find out. Once you nationalize, you set up an. I was looking at up some information about incorporated business trust. I got a little confused in, in a part of it where. Um, well, you don't want a business trust. Right. You don't want a business trust. You don't want a business trust per se. Um, okay. Unless um, you want to run your family like a business in that regard, like the Rockefeller Foundation or the um, Cogni or the um, Morgan Foundation or Ford Foundation, or whatever the case is. You know what I'm saying? If you want to make it into a foundation, then yes, you'll run it in that business way. Um, you have the um, family in which that, you know, based on, you know, who have, you know, what son or what daughter becomes the head of the company, and that's what their group position is grown, you know, what they're grown into. You know, that's where that the Rockefellers and them work. So if you're talking about in that sense, then, yes, you need a business. Um, otherwise, you need a common law express trust. A common law express trust. That's what you need. Okay, okay mm-hmm. now is that the kind of work? Okay, now is that the kind? I guess I don't want to get confused. I was heard some okay. information on another radio show. And the brother was breaking it down, saying that, you know, you can set up the family trust and the business trust. Right. How do you all right. set, how do you all set, set it up? Hmm? Right. That's how you do. That's how you set all of that up. Right. Um, that's what I said. You want to, the family trust can actually become, you know, what we call, you know, a, you know, part of the business. The business trust can be, be part of that, you know, part of that family trust. All that can be tied into it. It's the way in which okay, they set it up. And okay, everything, now is based on, everything is based on common law in this regard. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I guess I was looking at the end of it. When you buy land and you buy property, it was a part on there where you could put the property and the land right into the trust so it won't be touched? Exactly. 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 That's the okay, whole point. Okay, now is that... 
Now, what you can ask, like, is that under the individual, or does that come under the temple, under the Moorish Empire? How does that work? Is it is it the individual, but it's still protected under the Moorish Empire, or what? Or is it just separate on your own? Hmm? Right. Listen, it's, it's based, listen. It's based on the name in which that you use. You have to come up with a fictitious business name. Right. Okay. Now, let's say you have a Moorish ministry of some sort. Then yes, everything in which that you have, your property, your assets, your cars, your land, everything goes under that Moorish trust or that Moorish ministry trust. Okay. Okay, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let, let me let me explain it this way. All right. Let me see what's what the best way I can explain it. A trust is like the Constitution. The Constitution for the United States of America is an express trust. Um, the Articles of Confederation, the Articles of Association, all of that is an express trust. The Declaration of Independence is, is an express trust. That is a body of people coming together to state what they will stand on, what principles, and how they will, um, how they react, the laws, the government, everything was that they're setting up at that particular time period. All right? So that's what symbolizes an express trust. Okay? Okay. All right now, you can take that express trust, all right, and form mm-hmm. several trusts, several different trusts. Just like you said, the family trust. You can mm-hmm. form a business trust, and okay. detail each one what you want. Like for example, if it's a business trust, like I said, you will groom um, family members to be in a particular position as CEO, president, or chairman, or whatever the case is, and um, then you will have a board of directors or a board of trustees, as it is called, and the board of trustees will act just like a board of, um, um, you know, just like a board of trustees will act just like a board, a, a, um, a council, you know, just like those who sit on the corporation. They will act in that same capacity in that regard. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? In other words, it's like a checks and balances, just like um, you have the the president who's the CEO of the corporation called the United States. You know what I'm saying? And you have Congress, you know, which does the checks and balances with the Senate and the House of Representatives, you know, and making sure that he don't have too much power. So it's the same thing with a um, trust. You know, you must have a beneficiary that's part of the trust, um, managers, general managers that's part of the trust. You must have a board of directors, or which is the board of trustees, which is part of the trust. All right, and you must have a trustee, and you have the trust itself. These are the basic elements of a trust. Once you have all of those things, you can write it up in a common law fashion, which means basically you can take it down to the register of deeds and put it on file, and they'll record it for you, give you a book and page number, and now your properties. Or protect it. Okay, you can also call the um, IRS and get an EIN number for that trust. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is the way in which that you set up a trust. Once again, you can go to the state building and do an unincorporated association, or what is called unincorporated um, nonprofit organization. And you put that fictitious business name there. Like I said, that's only about five dollars. Mm. You can transform that into a ministry or into a trust. That way, as a ministry, it gives you religious protection. Well, so that that what the, isn't that like the temple? I mean, isn't that like the Moors science temple? Mm-hmm. Um, it depends on the way we said you set it up. It don't have to be. Per se, or science to No, no, no. I'm not talking about the name of it. I'm talking about this. Come on. Let me give you an example. I was looking over the, mm-hmm. the website you have, and I noticed that you put yeah. the business under the Moorish Temple Science, 
So I was wondering, what's that all about? I mean, I'm not trying to get in your business like that, but I was just trying to get an understanding of how you know it goes. Did what now? Hmm? You said I said, you I was looking at what? It looks, the way you have it on the website, it's like you put the business uh-huh. underneath the the temple as protection. Right. I didn't understand. I didn't quite understand that. So I was wondering when other people join the join right. the temple. Right, because because so they just we, we made everything. Right, we made it non we made it um non profit. Oh, we made non profit. Right. Okay. Made a non-profit. And like I said, right. what is it? It's a non-profit. Is that still 503C? No. 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 It's unincorporated. It's unincorporated. Oh, okay. Now, how does it work for the dynasty? Okay. Well, how does it work for the dynasty part? Do you know the dynasty part of the trust? I don't mean, I may sound a little confused. I'm a little confused. <laughs> right. I'm just trying to put it up in my head. I got a pl- I got a plan. Yeah, I got a plan in my head. That's why I'm saying ask these questions. And okay. I'm just trying to figure right. out how it all connects. All right, all right, all right. But this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to go to the laws <laughs> because we're going to do what? We're going to go to the law. The law. We're going to go to the law. Okay. So every kind of valuable property, both real and personal, can be assigned at law and may be subject matter of a trust. Okay, so once again, every kind of valuable property, both real and personal, that can be assigned at law may be the subject matter of the trust. And further, check this out. The person who creates the trust may mold it into whatever form he or she pleases. Okay. So this is what I'm trying to explain to you. This is in common law. There is no guidelines. You make it into what you want to make it into. You use oh, a fictitious okay. business name. Okay. Yeah, because I was looking at the economic right. you factor. What's it about now? Just like, just like, just like Prophet Nobujali did um, the Constitution and Bylaws of the Temple. He had seven hmm. articles. They did those seven articles. Okay. Those yeah, I guess I was articles. looking at it a little. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I guess okay. I was looking at it. I guess I was looking at it a little bit differently. I know how you set up the regular businesses, you know, when you incorporate or do the S corporation, that that type of thing. But I thought it was right. like but I the, guess it's making it a little bit more complicated for me is this trust aspect. No, no. The difference is that the federal constitution protects trustees as citizens yeah. throughout the constitution of the United States. But corporations not being citizens, as the word is used in the constitution, does not have privileges and immunities of citizens. Mm, okay, okay, okay. So you talking about a trustee, you talking about um those who are part of the trust, you know what I'm saying, they have immunity and privileges, you know what I'm saying, as being citizens of that particular trust. See when you put the trust together, um you know, that's damn near like you put a state together. <laughs> okay. Am I going a little bit too far? <laughs> I mean, I mean, this is my, this is, you know, when I heard, when I heard about it, it sounds simple, but I know it's probably more complicated because it was like the family trust, and then it was the business trust, and then it was the dynasty trust where they say the rich families they do that so that the right, they pass it down, right. whether whether they're alive right, or those not. Are, those are genetic or genealogical or perpetual trust, right? So, and um, right, just like the, just like John D. Rockefeller did. Then you have David Rockefeller, you have um, Philip Rockefeller, you have all of these Rockefellers who now, you know, who comes, you know, and being part of that trust, you know, is now mm-hmm. to establish their power based on the trust and the information that's in the trust. Now, the mm-hmm. thing is that you don't even have to put the trust information on uh, with the register of deeds. You don't even have to share that information with them. Oh, Okay. You know what I'm saying? Wow. The trust actually is something in which that is private. So you can take the last, you can take the front page and the bottom page and take it to the register of deeds after you get it notarized, that last page, and get it sealed and signed, and then attach it back to the meat of the, um, you know, trust. But the rest of the um, trust information does not go on public record because it's private. Okay? So that's the way that you want to set it up. You want to make sure that your trust is private. 
You don't want your trust to be in the public. No. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit more research. I, uh, I still want to hear your, your version because you break things down a little bit more. Um, you know, add a little bit more to it than I need. Um, oh, yeah. yeah that's, that's our job. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, I, I was surprised you got on that subject right at the end. So I was just looking over some stuff like that earlier, how I want to set things up. You know, everybody got a plan in their mind, but I just want to know when I make all these moves, how it's going to coincide and how I'll be more secure economically because you all on economics and everything, too. When you leave one nation to another, that means you kind of alleviate other things. Right. Well, the reason why you use an express trust, uh, an express trust is basically based on partnership. You know what I'm saying, whereas the law of partnership is the branch of law of principal and agent. You know what I'm saying, while trustee under an express trust are the absolute principles. All right, but accounting to the beneficiary who has no power either as principal or agent in actual administration. So that is okay. the key to express trust, which acts as a partnership. The partnership is between the trustee and the beneficiary. The trustee handle all of the actions and affairs of the trust, while the beneficiary just get the benefits from it and don't have to do shit. You know what I'm saying? As far as that is concerned, because they are the inheritors, they are the heirs. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, I got you on that. Right. So it's like you put together a board of trustees. You have a board of people who does the everyday business, just like a corporation does. But then you have the um. The family of the CEO, they can go and play golf for a damn day. Okay, but look here. When you say that, though, you know, when you, when you set up the S corporation, you know what I'm talking about? That's a little bit different. I'm not talking about something that's just right. way, so way over my head now. I'm talking about right. something that's just kind of, you know, narrowed it down a little bit. I don't you know all the CEOs and all that kind of, you know. I'm more like the S corporation in the... You know right, but saying? see, just the thing about the corporations. The corporation presents the highest model for organized um, capital. However, one is corporations, two is partnership, three is express trust. And that of corporations oh. is the lowest. So the corporation is the lowest, while that of the express trust is the highest or the higher. Okay, so okay. So, so when we get into express trust, you're talking about the highest form of organization. Okay. A corporation okay. is the lowest form of organization. Oh, okay. And that's okay. what we were saying that you can do it under a family in which that, you know, if you groom your family to that to that extent, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. um, some Europeans, they marry only back into money over and over again. You don't get mm-hmm. no stragglers running up in there, you know what I'm saying, jumping on their fortune. That's a no no. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. so that's the rules. So those are just some of the rules of the game. You keep money mm-hmm. time back in, and that way the trust is always established, and the monies are always there. You know, so mm-hmm. these are just some of the little um, clues that you know you break down. Like for example, um, an express trust, um, whether created under a will or a deed or settlement. You know what I'm saying? Basically, mm-hmm. that's the highest known method of administration. Okay, so that's best. So I'm on the right track then. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. The trust, the express trust is the highest known method of administration. So if you want to um, administer something and do something, that's the best way to do it. Okay. Like, for example, debt incurred under express trust are not the debt of the beneficiaries under the trust, but are of the personal debts of the trustees, who are not agents, but are absolute owners and principals of the trust. So the trustees have to account, and of course, to the beneficiaries. So the beneficiaries, you know what I'm saying, in a sense, have higher authority. But the beneficiaries have no partnership powers. Okay. Okay, so those are the words that I have to leave you with where you can go into your research so you can get a greater understanding. Okay, because I'm going to go back right. over the state. Yeah, so I'm going to download this and go back over it again and kind of hook it up so I can get a full picture so I can make some plans. <laughs> this is just something I got in my head. Yeah. I, go, I want to do this right. Okay. Um, right. Matter of fact, matter of fact, this, 
Matter of fact, let me, let me read this United States Supreme Court case law. It says the trust was not a corporation or a joint stock company or partnership, but a trust formed by deed of settlement for the purpose of securing investments. The trustee was the legal owner of the trust property, and the business of the trust was managed by them and the committee created by the deed for the benefit of the certificate holder who announced now check this out. It says who were strangers to each other and who entered into a no entered into no contact between themselves, nor with any trustee on behalf of each other, and were not therefore partners. Now the reason why they saying that is because when you look at um the coming together of the trust, remember we just been saying that normally it happens as a partnership. But when um people die off you know, things change. If there's no rules or whatever is not set into place, then a policy set into place, then anything can go. Anything can happen. So when you do a trust, you have to make sure that you almost account for almost everything in which that could possibly occur so that there's always a guideline or some type of protocol to be followed, especially if you're doing a family or a business trust, especially a business trust. That is necessary if you're going to do a business trust. Well, one last question. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I don't want to hold you up. Um, you go to your title. When you do the um, nationality. Right. Um, right. Now, a load of your titles. A load of your titles. Um, when you get a load of your title, it has to be outside of the 13 original um, states or colonies. All right. Okay. Which is Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. Delaware, Maryland, New York, Connecticut, you know, um, you know, Maine, um, but it was the other one, uh, New Hampshire, you know, Vermont. So those are the 13 so-called um, original colonies. Okay. All right. So anywhere outside of those 13 original colonies, you can do an elodial title. So let's say if you live in Florida, you live in Alabama, Texas, Mississippi, on up into um, um, Arkansas, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, you know, if you go into any of those particular states going westward, you can do an allodial title, which is basically doing a land pattern. What you would do is call down to the Bureau of Land Management. And when you call down to the Bureau of Land Management, you will ask them for a certified copy of the land pattern. Once you get it in the mail, I think it's like about $25 um, when you call down to the State Bureau of Land Management. They'll send it to you. Get it in the mail. If the land has been abandoned, if there's no mortgage company tied to it, if there's no um, banking system tied to it, then actually you can go in and write up a a quiet claim deed or a warranty deed for the property and place, uh, which is a loading of title also, or Homestead Act, all of those, and put the land pattern number on your documentation and take over the land. Okay. Evidence. Okay. Um, so you yeah. have to go. So I would suggest that you go and look for unclaimed property. Okay. You can go down to the tax administration or tax um, assessment um, office, which is down there near the register of deeds, normally in the courthouse, and get a printout of unclaimed properties. In other words, abandoned property. And you can actually confiscate the abandoned property by writing and by claiming it. It's unclaimed. So that means that you will write a claim to get it. And if no one comes back within seven years of that claim and can say nothing about it, then that land is yours definitely after the seven years. And as a matter of fact, that even goes for those who do squatting on the land. You know, that's a big thing now, you know what I'm saying, for when you squat on land. So you can also do that, you know, if you was able to squat for seven years, you can actually write up after the seven years. Um, some type of a little title or, you know, quite claim deed or warranty deed or whatever the case is, and write it up 
and the land is yours, you know, whether it's a house on it or not. So these are the things in which that we definitely have to master, being that this land is ours. We have to get this information back. A good place to check out right now is Detroit. Detroit has got them abandoned blocks and blocks and blocks of just them abandoned houses and land. I know. And do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And get that. You need to be yeah. getting that they shit. Them, they I know they telling them they, was, they had a, a, a mini down here. I guess where um they said the ministers it was telling the ministers they all about the property. But the thing I thought about was well, how can the ministers and the people buy the property when if you're not naturalized property? I heard you say property can't own property. You got it. Property can't own property. So, so guess what? It's never. So guess what? They they all they will always pay taxes on it. Exactly. Mhm. Yeah, because these other people coming in buying us stuff. So I'm wondering, well, these other people buy buying all these um, developers. They come in and what are these developers? They have a lodeo title where they just come in and get that property like that. In some places, yes. Some places, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I just didn't get that part. It said buy. I said it didn't make it didn't make sense to me because it sounds like if, you, if they buy it up, I mean, what good is that? Do you still play? You know, I didn't, I didn't get that. <laughs> but the people don't, you know. Listen, going by what you had, the information you had been given now, like I said, it just it didn't fit. So it's like, why give? If, if people in in high leadership know that, they just I just feel like we're really being scammed all the way around. Look, the, look, these motherfuckers are bamboozling the people like crazy. They're not I teaching know. them the proper way to do this information. They got religious mm-hmm. organizations, but not teaching the people individually how to do religious protected organizations so that they can protect their property and their assets at the same time. Mm-hmm. All right? Because, because the only thing they want is for the people to take all their property and assets and add into their shit, into their religion. Yeah, that's but they're not going to teach them individually. Right, they don't want to teach them individually. They only want them to know what they know. They want to sit at the helm and they want to dictate policy, but yet not doing the people right. They're not teaching the people nationality, not teaching them birthright, no. lineage, heritage. No. They're not teaching them. Right, they're not teaching them divine creed. They're not teaching them um, these particular things. They're not teaching them status. You know, mm-hmm. that's why. I saw, so, yeah. No, that's why. I, right, that's why I so appreciate this show because. You know, when you come on here, you come up with that strong information. And if I hadn't heard it from this, from your show, I would have been thinking like everybody else. Right. And these people are five hundred one c three. They they licensed ministers and they tax exempt. While the rest of the congregation is paying exactly. tax. Exactly. That's what they pay exactly. tax is at. Right. Yeah, because they, you mm-hmm. know, cause they have like a mer- they have like an emergency manager supposed to come in and take over because they said the city can't manage anything. So I guess they came in with he came in with advice telling them to to buy up the property. And that just didn't make sense to me, yeah. you know, as far as the slave right. on him. I mean, we stay still in the same boat and still won't own exactly. nothing, control nothing. Exactly. And then and then they don't tell the people on how to do it, and that's the thing that gets me. And that means you no, know that they're taking the oath, and, they, and they're taking a sworn oath to secrecy, um, to keep the people deaf, dumb, and blind. But yet at the same time, claiming that they enlightening the people and making them not deaf, dumb, and blind. So I mean, that yeah, is the paradox, the great paradox, and the great deceit. You know what I'm saying? In which that the devil did also. The devil said, "Look, the only thing I did was whisper in the ear. The hell, they came on their own." Yeah, because they offer the allegory, you know, they offer the little scripture with this being that, but if you don't know the deeper meaning of that and how it pertains to yourself, you just lost with the sheep like that, you know, just, I don't know. <laughs> I hope some more people caught on to that one because that was just a, that was just a, some money to get back into their churches, like you said. Because mm-hmm. we're not going to end up owning nothing and, and the state going to still take over the, the, the city, they've been wanting Detroit for a long time. Comey Young used to keep them out of here. Exactly. <laughs> Call me no harm. Exactly. But uh, it just seemed like a big old takeover, and then you're talking about the warship. I mean, this show is really enlightening. I hope a lot of people are listening well, because this is just ridiculous. Well, we need to show them. I mean, and the fact mm-hmm. that we are the original landowners, we need to start putting this information within a um, – we need to start putting this information, you know what I'm saying, into an allodial title. Into a land pattern, into a room. 
Mm-hmm. That seems you know, like so, the right way to, yeah. to, to do it. Because you have a lot of people that have, like, auctions. In, well, they have auctions in every state. But now that I think about it, everybody's right. buying, all, buying houses. You know, they have, one year, I remember they had them, like, $500. Not even a little bit, you know, you had to redo them yourself, though. But I noticed that a lot right. of people were trying to go for that. But based on what you're saying, I mean, what good is that? You're still paying taxes. You still might lose your home. You're still under the same right. stress. You're not economically coming out of anything. Right. Right. And see, that's the reason why you put it under a ministry. If you put it under a ministry, then guess what? You're tax exempt. You go down to the tax assessment or tax administration and you tell them, look, I'm a ministry. They'll give you a tax exempt paper so that you can fill out so that the following year, after all the taxes are paid off, you no longer will ever have to pay taxes again in your life. And under the ministry now. So now, if you live within like the 13 colonies, such as the 13 states that we made mention of, that's the way that you will have to do it there. But outside of the 13 states, you can do a load of your titles and land patterns and actually own the land. And once you put that information down at the um, register of deeds, then they would tell you that your um, that your information is now stricken off the books. In other words, it's going back into the private mode now. Mm-hmm. In other words, any nobody, you know, not just anybody can walk up in there and get access to your information now. Because mm-hmm. now it's going back into the private. As long as you're paying taxes, it's in the public. Mm-hmm. Oh, when you do a lodeo title, when you do the land pattern, when you do the Home Ed Act, all these different things, you make it mm-hmm. private. That's what you're doing. You're making it private. You know? Mm-hmm. And so you're taking it from out of taxable, from being taxable to being non taxable. You know, and it's best to do it under a ministry or either some type of organization. Like I said, it has to be a fictitious business name, some type of name in which that alludes to some type of greatness or some type of knowledge or wisdom. I would recommend. Okay, that be done under the um. Can I have parties put under the board sign Temple? Yes, it can be done under the Morris Science Temple, the Morris Divine National Movement, the Morris Holy Temple of America, of the world. Uh, yes. Yeah. The Canaanite Temple, it can be done under any and all the names in which that Prophet Nova Jali motivated and moved his organization through the various names from 1913 to 1929, or in this case, 1928. Okay, because he set that up in religious and civic, but it gives you a little bit right. more freedom. The civic, right. By 1928, then they set up the Moorish Science Temple, but all both of them, the civic and the religion, was under the Moorish Divine National Movement, or what was known at that time, the Moorish National Divine Movement. So um, national, of course, symbolizes the civics, um, and, of course, um, divine symbolizes religion. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, that sounds... I'm going to really go over this place. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're going we to do a whole show on this information. We're going to do a whole show on it. Um, matter of yeah, fact, we might do it yeah. next Monday. We might do next Monday the whole uh, yeah. show on this information. Gonna, uh, it's going to be called Land Pattern. Yeah. It's going to be called Land Pattern. Pattern. And how to be non-tax, not in, um, tax exempt or tax immune. Yeah, I was feeling that we needed to be lit. I was feeling that we needed to go in that direction. I was feeling that all day. That's why when that person came with that question, it shifted the whole uh, yeah, discussion. Yeah. And it shifted mm-hmm. it, and that's well, why I mean, she called in, because I was feeling that. Remember when I made that statement? And as soon as, you, soon as the subject shifted. Well, normally we get off, look, normally we get off at 10 o'clock. We're still on hitting 40. Yeah, <laughs> it shifted. It shifted, because she came right on. As soon as I said that, I said, that's we need to do a whole subject on this. But I was feeling this all day, mm-hmm. and then when the brother came and asked that question, it shifted it, and then I made that statement, and then that's when you you started talking, and then it shifted the whole day. But I thought I was feeling this all day. So when you do when you doing this subject next Monday, you're gonna do it next Monday. We're gonna be all right, good. 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 okay, look forward. Good. You have to be taxing, taxing good. You good. Yeah, I was feeling right. that all day. So I, that's why I went yeah. That's why I, as soon as you got on it, it shifted, and that's when she came right on, because I was feeling it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, right, well, that's why we always go in more depth. If you notice, we always go in more depth than any of um any other station because the whole thing is that we study this information. We live this. This is how yeah. I, um I personally acquired my three acres of land that I have right now. My wife and I have, and we were able to do that by being tax exempt or tax immune. You know what I'm saying? And putting it under the fictitious name of a ministry, and then taking all our property and assets, house, land, cars. Putting that under, you know what I'm saying? Under, you know, under, you know, the ministry. So now, if you go to uh, Farm Bureau or to State Farm or to All State, you know, they have to pull up. Oh, okay, um, your cars, the house. Oh, that's tax exempt. So they can't send you like they do other people, you know, on your block every year. Um, a um, a automobile or a car tax. Or every year annually, a land or house tax. They can't do that. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, we need to know that information because you know everybody has a lot of money. So the little bit of money they do get hold of, you want to invest it wisely and get something that exactly. they don't have to be afraid of having to leave in so many years. You know, and right. things for their children too. No, we need that right. to please that stuff. <laughs> Please. All right, well, we're going to go into it one day. So um, that we're going to be the topic. Everybody remind ourselves of that. Next right. Monday, we're going to get into cool. it. All right. Cool. All right, now. Right. Okay. Um, any closing remarks Let's before we go, y'all? So, right, so, so the topic everything. was going to Looking so forward the to the topic was, next Monday. That's the, yeah. All right. So the topic going to be Express Trust? Okay. Express Trust, Elodio Titles, and Tax Immunity. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Because I was feeling that anyway, you know. I was feeling that anyway because I always be led to go in a certain direction. I was feeling that since all day. So when the brother came in, that's why I commented. Because I, I felt that we should have, that should have been a direction. And when when he said it, it shifted. And it just, it went into a whole other show. <laughs> yeah. But definitely, I, I'm 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 with it. Yeah, you know. Oh, we gonna be doing. Um, all right. Uh, thank you for the information. You, I'm gonna get off of here. Thank you for the information you have given. I'm gonna go back over it and go back over some notes I have. Right. So I yeah. As a matter of fact, matter of fact, we're gonna deal with it for the next two shows. We're gonna do it Friday and Monday. So this coming oh. Friday and also Monday next Monday we're gonna deal with it. So. Um, Good. Keep dealing with it until a lot of people also, come to understand. understand it also, we're going to phone commercial code as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we'll go into that information too because um okay. everybody need to know the separation of the various laws based on equity, based on amorality, which is merit time, and based on common law. You have to know those okay. three different areas. The co- the um Constitution okay. speaks to all three of those. Okay. The Constitution okay. speaks to all three, so you have to know all three particular laws. Which is under natural okay. law. Natural law is the highest law, which is universal law. So, so we need to know universal and natural law. So, so the Constitution speaks on the Uniform Commercial Code as well? The um, Uniform Commercial Code is the law in which that runs the world now because of the maritime, in other words, the water law, in which right. that has been implemented over the last 6,000 years or so since Samaria and Egypt, um, dealing okay. with. Uh, and, and being the navigators of the seven seas, in particular the Moors. Um, once that is um, understood, overstood, understood, um, you know, that's dealing with commerce, you know. Okay. Um, so it's just about okay. knowing um, the hierarchy of commerce, the hierarchy of these various um, laws. And we're going to go into it um, next, okay. um, this coming Friday. So um, I'm not going to get into it right now because I have some okay. things I know I need to do. I'm getting ready to get up off of here. And um, oh, we'll come back next Friday, 8 o'clock, and we're going to go more into that information. We're going to be dealing with UCC, um, Express Trust, a local title, as well as also tax immunity. In other words, right. y'all need to listen. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio.
you get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.